Today we're going to talk about the cylinder and sphere shading and um, also in addition to those two we're going to um, do a little example showing um, little characters, okay, little, little fellas there. So in the handout, by the way, I think no, I can't remember. I think I posted a PDF online that shows the direction of the stroke, but I know I made it. I can remember now if I posted it. If I didn't, I will as soon as I finish this. But um, just showing you know which way the direction of the gradient is going and which way the strokes are going. Um, and uh, yeah, just to reiterate, let's make this black on white and white on black. If you use a color, then a color is not going to be 100% at the 100% point because colors except black are going to be lighter than black as a value. Um, so in the assignment handout, uh, just do two on one sheet, but of course, you know, again, for all of these, do sketches first, right, so that you don't get stuck on something you might not like. And then in the, uh, in the handout again, it uh, breaks it down into the two. Um, the, the instructions are kind of long. I, I would say read them once and then you know go a little bit by the um, by the drawing. However, don't copy that drawing. Ideally, I know in an ideal world we would be you know we would have big windows on the walls and we would have like natural light and a main light coming from one side and less light coming from the other, and you would have a sphere in your hands and a cylinder and you would actually be looking at the object. Well, that's the ideal world, but. We don't have that. So um, another thing we could do is turn off the lights and have you bring flashlights, which is what Natata used to do, which is kind of an interesting sight, everybody with a little flashlight. Um, but to say that really, you know, if you copy a drawing of a drawing in a way, right, a drawing of an object, you're not really doing the object, right? So try to use this really just as a reference, okay? Uh, and then just a reminder for, uh, so this week we're still going to work on black, next week we're going to start with markers, so you do need to get yourself a set of markers, um, you know, 10% to 100% and a couple of blacks, uh, because they run out much faster, and uh, cool or, or, or warm, I don't know, it's, it's up to you, okay, but you're going to need those ne throughout next week and later. And again, Prisma colors are probably best to start with because they're lighter. If you get chart pack, they'll really be quite darker. So I'll just leave that for a second up there. Um, so again, in the screen up here, you won't see the gradient very well because well, it's, it's, it's not a very good projection and everything. But in the video, it should be okay. Um, so a, a cylinder and a sphere, what's happening is we're going to just reverse what we had been doing with um, the, uh, the shading exercises that we did, except that really what we'll do is we're at, where we had darkness or shadow, we're going to have light. So we're going to reverse the light direction. We're going to say the light is going to be coming from this side. And that way we don't have to get confused, right? So we, we, we have this as a, as a reference. Um, so once you establish that, so we're going to say it's from the right, uh, do the same thing we did before, so we, we draw a little cylinder, or a big cylinder, uh, just really light, and I don't know if you can see it, Let me see. kind of. So really light, and, um, well let me, Actually, let me backtrack a little, little bit for a moment. Let me just do one really quick to, again, uh, talk about the shadows. So remember that when the, when the light was coming from here, you were identifying a spot on this cylinder that was somewhere here at about 4 o'clock, and that was going to be your core shadow, okay? Now, of course, it's confusing because I'm writing with white. Um, and that was your darkest area with a little bit dark, less dark next to it and then a little bit left alone there to um, imply a little bit of reflected um, light and then you had another area here which was a little bit of shadow and 
again a little bit lighter there. Uh, and then you have the cast shadow. Okay, so just as a reminder, that's the core. Uh, a little bit here, it's reflected. Uh, this would be the highlight. Uh, and this would be the cast shadow. I mean, those are really the four. I forget if there's one more, but... Um, okay. So... So for this, we just invert the direction of the light. It's always a good thing to like also do a little drawing of a light source. Um, uh, let's try that. By the way, if you're not good at ellipses yet, get good. Like do lots of them <laughs> and just practice, 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 okay? Because um, of course from now on, you know, everything we do is going to Require them. Uh, in the uh, handout, what we have is also a little bit of uh, inset at the top. Okay, it's a little fainted on the, on the screen, but okay. and it, with the same principle that you want to leave white paper. Um, in the, uh, in the black and white drawing on black, you want to leave, of course, the black behind it. Um, this can be useful too if you want to do an object that, say, it's like yellow or brown, and you start out with um, uh, brown paper. So you already have the color of the object, and you work uh, by adding a little bit. So the trick in this drawing is not to put too much stuff on the paper. Um, so once again, now we're going to we're going to do our strokes parallel to the object, which is, you know, again, against or, or the opposite of what we've been saying about stroking at 45 degrees. And that is okay. Um, you know, it's hard to make a, a, like a rule that can never be broken. I would say if you're using colored pencils and maybe more sort of fluid media, it's probably okay to go with the direction of the object. If you're using pen or pencil, uh, probably strokes are better. So I'm just going to really draw an area that I'm going to do my core shadow in, okay? So, and then an area that I'm going to do a little bit of shadow here. And then you just, just, just draw it. Um, it can be rough now, right? Because, because I can always go back and make my drawing a little crisper. And I'm going to put more in the middle. So notice how I'm really keeping my drawing in this case, the height of the cylinder is parallel to the stroke of the pencil and perpendicular to my pencil. Um, and then you kind of, you know, maybe adjust a little bit, a little bit here. Uh, it's really the suggestion, right? Again, if we make a perfect drawing, I mean, we don't need a perfect drawing, right? We just want to show an idea. Uh, okay. Uh, so now, on the top, we're going to show the same highlight um, because the light is coming here, we're going to show it here, so it will be kind of opposite, right? So it's somewhere there. It's not much, but it will help. Okay. And that's almost done except for the, for the shadow. So. I don't know, maybe the, drawing, the assignment doesn't call for the shadow, but I'm going to do one anyway. Um, ah, okay, yeah, that's important actually, because the shadow in a drawing on black huh, is black, right? That's the hardest thing, I mean, that's the darkest thing. So what you can do instead of drawing the shadow, you draw an area around it. So let's see if this was like that. Maybe, yeah, maybe a little more. Right, so you get the shadow by projecting your top points down to the ground and then by extending lines from your object um, on the ground. And so now what I can do is I just, let's see, I have to try to make this not so... It's a little odd, but um, 
think it can work. All right. So the the other thing you can add to um, your main uh, lights, your main um, types of shadows, rather in this case highlights, is again um, a little bit of uh, reflected light, and that could be adding. I don't know if you can see it in the sample. You can't really see it, but right here we're just adding a little bit of color to suggest that maybe there is a, um, you know, either a colored uh, object behind it, or maybe the desk is red. So I'm going to try to use yellow and see if that does anything. And you might not be able to see it, but I'm just going to. Oh, actually, you can see it. Good. And now I'm going to do the opposite of that here. Okay, just a little bit. So now I'm going to make the, and I'm going to use a very thin rather than uh, Prismacolor, which I was using earlier, because it's a little, it's not as um, thick, so the line is not going to be as, that it's not going to cover as much, but it's going to be a little sharper. It's going to allow me to uh, refine the, uh, you know, my outlines a little better. So also what I'll do is I'll leave the circles or the ellipse not finished because that's going to suggest again, um, well again everything is reversed here so <laughs> what I'll do is, I mean normally you would leave it unfinished there to suggest the highlight in a black and white drawing on white. Um, I think we can still do that because And it's kind of a reverse, reverse thinking. Um, um, so whenever you use the pencil like this, it's it's you just lift up the pencil on your way out, you know, to make it not as uniform and not as stiff. So, and I, and I know that some of you are still, you know, going a little bit, bit by bit, bit by bit. Try to do bigger strokes, you know, more, you know, get that motion kind of moving before you even, um, even touch the paper. And then it's going to be a little, it's going to look better. Okay, I mean, the nice thing about a black, uh, drawing on black, it has this sort of like uh, luminous quality, which is neat. It's, you know, a little bit ghosty. Um, okay, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put a parting line. So remember, we said the parting lines are like whatever there is a feature on the object that is, uh, you know, maybe a, a mold division, you know, whatever it's called. Uh, oh gosh, a molding point, you know, where two parts come together. Or maybe like if you have a set of drawers, if you actually look to your side and you look at the drawers in the room, in the cabinets next to the wall, where two drawers are next to each other, you're gonna have, you're gonna see a little bit of a highlight and a little bit of a dark line there, you know, right here, and that's a parting line, and it helps to find the object. So, for that, you can use your black and black and, and white pencils. Um, if you want to do a really strong one, you can even use a um, white out, you know, which is the cheap or, or cheating version of using wash, which would be, you know, like white wash. Uh, and that really covers, so, you know, you can be sure you're going to get a nice, nice line with that. I'm going to try first to do it with uh, just black, black and white. So, so what I want to do is just split the cylinder. Like that. And actually, I don't have a very thin uh, black, so I'm using... Music Prisma color now. So you really want to, uh, yeah, break the object. So now it doesn't look like much because it's just a black line. Uh, I'm going to continue here. But as soon as I put some white, it should be a little more interesting. Uh, 
again I'm actually just going to use Prisma because it shows up better on the screen and in the drawing. So usually the highlight is below, right? Because the, the top part is going to cast a little bit of a shadow underneath and the highlight is going to be sitting right under that. suggest maybe is, is the surface that holds the cylinder. Uh, you can't really see it there, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna edit the video, stick this in, um, so that that gives you know gives a sense there is something there, but um, but it doesn't contradict whatever else you have. So I'm ju I just put a little yellow here. Okay, if I put white, that wouldn't work because white would be next to my black, and that wouldn't be good. There were, by the way, some beautiful spheres drawn from last week that just used kind of a continuous um, uh, line. Okay. Um, when you do the sphere, again, keep in mind that you know if you had contour lines, that would really help to find the object. Now, in this one, we're just going to use one contour line, which is going to become our um, our parting line. This one. And, um, and then again, the trick here is that you can't really draw the shadow, right? Because you can't draw a shadow with white. So it's a little bit of um, uh, defining, let me put it this way. If this is the highlight and this is the shadow part, right? It's sort of defining this area of darkness by the shape of the highlight. And so what you're drawing is you're drawing the reverse of that banana shape. Remember? What I'm going to do actually, I'm going to reverse it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the shadow on the, uh, I mean the highlight. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, just like that, right? So the highlight is still going to come from there. Uh, so remember, it was a banana shape, and it was a banana because we wanted to we wanted to get away from the outside. We wanted not to match, not to not to sort of blend our shadow with the edge of the object, because particularly if you have a, uh, a shadow there, uh, well, in the other case, it would have you know this would have kind of become one big blob. Okay, so. Let's try to do one. Um, now, drawing a circle is hard, right? So eventually, you might get, want to get yourself a nice big, you know, circle template, and once in a while, cheat and use it. I mean, it's, cheat is the wrong word, but just use it to do some of it to make it a little more. But you can still try to do it if you, you know, kind of do a. It's not bad. You see it. Okay, yeah, as soon as I stopped, of course, that's a problem. <laughs> so for this, of course, your pencil really has to be uh, vertical. That's, that's kind of... Uh, all right, so it really, you don't need much, really. Um, you need the highlight right here, and you need a little bit of reflected shadow here, reflected light. And so, let me see if I do a model of that. So if it's coming from this way, you could start by doing, let's say that's your North Pole and that's your South Pole, so that's behind, and this is your equator. Um, you could start by thinking of it, you know, in this way, as a series of um, parallels, right? So then the question just becomes, how many of these am I going to fill? Right? And you could say, well, maybe I'll fill three or four. 
and also again you leave a little bit of room there so if I start there um, what I'm doing is I'm really just drawing ellipses if you think about it right because uh, a contour line of a sphere would be and then I'm just gonna lighten up and, and try not to not to be too heavy so now the pressure of my pencil is really light and then as I go back I just increase it um, yeah again everything gets sort of uh, super contrasty on the screen I mean on the on your projection here but on the video it should be okay and I mean, you know, I could continue it because I could just do, and in this case, I'm going back to the trick of, you know, the more, the further apart my lines are, the more they're going to give this idea of gradient, right? So it's a little bit of a combination here. Okay, so now I'll do a very simple, by the way, in terms of doing a shadow for a sphere, I think the best way is always not to try to do this because that looks like it's falling off the cliff. Okay, I think it's best to just pretty much keep your um, your shadow as an ellipse where the uh, with the sphere, you know, it's sitting. You almost, if you almost imagine that you're one of the focuses, one of the foci of your ellipse shape that determines the shadow, maybe where the sphere is sitting. Okay. So if I take that, I'll just do maybe this. Okay. And now, um, for some reason, I still like to do my strokes horizontally instead of 45 degrees. I don't know. I don't know why I just thought of that. Um, we're going to ask Todd what his technique is for a shadow in black. Are you here, Todd? Yeah, just back there. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, reflected light um, and then I'm going to outline it a little bit strong. Oh yeah, and add the parting line. So I'm going to use yellow because that was nice and, nice and clear. And again, I'm just going to go, you know, the same parallel direction. So if you're doing your, your shading exercise, you should be able to get this sort of movement. Okay. Um, all right, so now because I don't have a template, or maybe I do. Ta-da, template, it's too small. Uh-oh, too small. Can't use it, too bad. Um, another thing you can do to your drawing is to actually insert a line behind it to kind of suggest maybe a um, maybe a wall, maybe the edge of your table. Always fade it out, you know, fade out the sides. Okay, so now I'm gonna just try to make this a little bit. And my lines now are pretty thick. Uh, because what I'm doing is, you know, because it's big and because it's not so perfect, I'm going to get away with, you know, making the viewer think that it's actually a perfect round circle. It really isn't because, because that's impossible, but um, that's not bad. Um, Now, one thing you could do, which I actually skipped, was that you could live, and that's the way it's shown here. I, I marked it too much. You see how it's actually fading out in this area, this area. So I could probably erase that. And I said never use a razor, but Prisma colors are tough to erase. So. Again, on the screen, I'm going to get away because everything is not so sharp. But. My drawing is not going to look as good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now let's do a um, so a parting line. We're going to do again. It's a sphere, so a, a 
section of that would be a circle, so a circle in perspective or in axonometric is an ellipse. So we're going to do the parting line perfectly as if it was, um, you know, like say the equator in the middle. And again, because I don't have much going on here in the middle, I'm going to um, not do it completely because uh, just to give that sense of, you know, continuous surface. Okay, and maybe you want to emphasize a couple of points. Uh, I do need to cut it though, right here. You can also go back and maybe mask some of the white. Actually, I didn't think about this earlier, but right now I'm just, you know, masking my white lines there a little more so that I get that sense of fading. Okay. okay. Anyway, it's a little schematic on the screen because. Um, because of the high contrast, but um, one thing I don't like is this white line that's so sh you know stark in contrast to the yellow. So I'm going to blend this a little bit. Um, so that is to say that you know step back to your draw from your drawing and say, oh, what's what looks a little weird? You know, what's odd? And to me, that was odd. The fact that uh, now I kind of killed the yellow, but. <laughs> The fact that that line was so, so white there. Okay. Um, all right. So the last thing is doing some characters, and you can go by the one that Sean and I learned. I'm going to try to post some more. Um, they're all about spheres in this case and cylinders, right? Um, and so you know, just just look how these are made. Uh, play a little bit, uh, in this case we're using colors too, and again the trick is really not to do too much, you know, really leaving um, blanks, which would be, you know, your black paper. The Michelin guy, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Michelin guy that sits on top of the, you know, big rigs um, next to the horns, you know, bah, 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 bah. Um, that's a great guy to try to, um, to draw. And I think it's still in some of the ads these days for the tires. Um, so, I mean, essentially you're just taking this and applying it to all these objects here, right? I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. And then, you know, making little adjustments. Uh, or the same with a cylinder. Okay. So if you have something that you like, an object that you have that, uh, you know, you want to reproduce, just, just do that. So, I don't know, let me see. A little. I mean, if you want to just practice spheres, just make it all spheres, it's okay. So you get your lighting kind of set, and then maybe you can go back and do you know features of these objects, like uh, you know maybe there's eyes here, or maybe there is a, a nose. Um, the best thing, really, probably would be to take a real thing, you know, and then shine a light. You know, at home, just take a you know your task light or your adjustable light and just shine a light on this thing and um, and see what you see, you know, see what
mean, this is a little bit mechanical now, right? Because, you know, if this is a big ball, this whole little ball probably would be in the shadow of the big ball. But I'm not worrying about that now. I'm just, I'm just trying to see what I get. And I can always go back and, you know, fix it. I mean, you know, it's something, right? It's a little bit, again, a little bit impossible, right? Because, you know, if this, again, is behind it, underneath this, probably wouldn't have the same exact lighting. But at least you start establishing some kind of uh, 3D effect.